Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I put together my rig to do extreme macro photography. What you see now is the rig without the camera and the optics, uh, just stripped down to the frame uh, elements uh, so that, I, and I'll show the rest later, but it's easier to talk about how I built it without all that stuff in the way in the front. <clears throat> I decided to do a vertical orientation which means the sample goes down here, the camera's here, and the optics look down. Uh, many rigs have horizontal orientations. There's pluses and minuses to both. To start with, uh, I wanted to get XYZ control on a platform that's under the objective. And a microscope stand is a really good way to do that because those tables have they have X, they have Y, and they have focusing built into them. And it's all very stable. So I looked on eBay and I bought a gutted Ortholux, Lights Ortholux 2 stand. You know, this is back when things were built really solid and, and heavy, which is what you want for this application. One of the reasons I chose the Ortholux 2 is for its focusing mechanism. And you have to be careful if you're going to use a microscope setup that you get the right kind of fine focusing knob. You can see that there's two knobs here. It's kind of hard. This I'll talk about later. This is the stepper motor drive that drives the table up and down for the focus stacking. But we'll talk about that later. But there's two knobs. There's a fine focus knob and then there's a coarse focus. Coarse focus knobs always have the full range available for the slide to go up and down. And you want to get a focusing mechanism that where the fine focus knob has access to that same range. Uh, for example, on my lights divert microscope, the focusing knob will go around twice and then it will grab the coarse knob, which is not what you want. You want um, a freely turning uh, fine focusing knob that will keep going until it hits the mechanical limits in the focus mechanism. And the Ortholux 2 is a very good choice for that. In order to uh, mount the camera and the optics over the stage, I chose to take this 3 by 3 inch extruded aluminum block. And I, I initially was going to cut the top of the microscope stand here so I could mount this back here so it would be over the uh, built-in stage and once I got the stand I'm like oh, I don't want to cut it so uh, I ended up clamping and the uh, this 3x3 three three inch block I clamped it to the top end of the microscope stand and it's on there very securely and it works pretty well and then because it's clamped I can take it off and use if I ever want to do anything else with this rig I can I can do that I'm not you know I haven't cut it off I'm not I haven't you know stopped myself from using it for anything else I still have the dovetail, dovetail for the objectives uh, I have an epi light feed and a transmissive light feed so you could make a fully operational microscope out of it because I mounted this beam out at the end the sample, by the time you get the camera and optics on here, the sample is centered out here, which is outside of the original focusing unit. So I actually put this extension on. I don't like this extension very much. I found on eBay a great big slide, and I have to work it. It's got some problems. It's too loose. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, turn properly, but I see what's wrong with it in there. And I intend on replacing uh, the original stage with this great big one which will stick out plenty far and it's actually heavier and the dovetails better in it which I think well so it'll be more stable than this one this uh, long beam provides a lot of flexibility I've got a intermediate plate here that can slide all the way up and down so that means I can set this up to use my camera with a regular one-to-one -one macro lens, which has a pretty long working distance. Or I can lower it and use it with the uh, Mitotoyo objectives 
and uh, relay lens, which I'll show all those later. So I've got a lot of uh, up-down motion here. And then once I get this in the position I want, I have a long Arca Swiss plate without having to mess with this intermediate uh, plate. I can just loosen this and I can take the whole camera optics assembly and slide it up and down. So the long Arca Swiss solution combined with an intermediate plate means that you have a huge uh, working um, height for the camera and whatever optics you put on. And this thing is just great because uh, you can get things set up and then if you need some working room to mess with it, you just slide it up and, and do your thing and then drop it back down. And I'll show examples in use of how this uh, all works. We've got the main components for an extreme macro rig. We have a stable stand. We have an XYZ stage. We've got some way to hold the optics and good adjustment for whatever optical configuration we're going to use. And the last thing you need is a stepper motor drive to drive the plate. So you'll be driving the plate, taking a picture, driving the plate a little bit more, taking a picture, drive a little more, take a picture, take a picture. And so I tried doing that manually and you don't want it. That's no way to live. So I ended up buying this solution called the uh, Micromate and I put a link in the show notes for it, which is really clever. Basically there's a stepper motor here with a flexure and then this U clamp with some nylon screws which you can screw down onto the focusing knob. So now the uh, the controller is able to uh, give you very fine control of the uh, of the focusing knob and the controller which is here uh, also purchased with this uh, Micromate unit is Bluetooth enabled and you operate it from your smartphone and I'll show that later. It also has a trigger here which connects to your camera so it will trigger the shutter on the camera and I'll go through with the timing and the interface uh, for that towards the end. So I think we have everything we need it, um, the mount itself and then the other thing you're going to need is some light solutions. And here I have a Dolan Jenner uh, fiber light. I have two fibers coming out. And I'll show, once I get the optics on, I'll, I'll show the various light configurations that I have. So that's really all you need is a stable platform, a way to drive, automatically drive the table up and take all the pictures. Then once you have all the pictures, you head to the computer and you use something like Zarine Stacker to put it all together. And I won't be showing that last step of going to the Zarine Stacker in this video. So now I've put the camera and my tube lens onto the Arca Swiss plate. I attach the, the uh, telephoto lens with its own um, mount to the Arca Swiss plate rather than attaching the camera to it and then I just put the camera uh, on top of connect it onto it. And you know this also with the uh, tripod collar I've got a little ability to rotate here if I need it. I'm using a Sony A99 which is Sony's, you know, translucent, translucent mirror A mount camera, which has a Minolta mount on it, and I'm using a, I don't know, must be 30 year old uh, APO 80 to 200 millimeter, uh, an old Minolta lens. Uh, it's great that it's APO, so it's got a great color correction on it. I set the zoom to 200 millimeters. And I use these Mitatoyo objectives. And they're industrial objectives. Uh, this one's a 20 power. And it's also 
uh, an APO and it's an M plan and it's an infinity focusing objective I think I've got it there and then it says F200 on it which means it wants a 200 millimeter tube lens which is why I've set the uh, the telephoto to 200 I also have a five power to tell you. <sighs> squeaky it's also an implant APO it's infinity focus 200 uh, millimeter and it's five power uh, with a numerical aperture of 0.14 and both of these are threaded the same now to get the objective on the end of the telephoto I got an adapter plate on eBay and it's threaded for the filter thread on the telephoto and then the threads on the ID are threaded for the uh, Mitotoyo standard so this adapter is an M26 by 0.75 which is the Mitotoyo and then it's a M72 by 0.75 which is the telephoto so usually I don't have this apart I just leave this thing screwed on to the filter thread and now I have an adapter I'll start with the uh, 5 power almost and then I just screw the objective onto the end and now you're actually except for lighting uh, you're actually ready to uh, do some macro photography now we're going to take a look at some lighting solutions if you haven't done extreme macro before it's difficult to explain just how hard it is to light your subject properly when you're doing stacking and get rid of harsh reflections try to get the right amount of you know right left intensities to get some relief in the uh, picture and sometimes you want very flat lighting so you got to have quite a few uh, techniques at your disposal the first one's kind of the simplest one is uh, I have a diffuser dome and this was from a flash attachment for a camera that you know, some of you may remember that Gary Fong brought to market a long time ago now, the top of that works really well for this application so I can Put the diffuser dome down and, and uh, here is the objective and then you can move the fiber lights around until you get uh, things lit the way you want and this has the ability to reduce the harshness of the direct fiber lights and make the light look like it comes from a larger solid angle uh, which has uh, some very helpful uh, advantages for lighting. For higher magnifications the ping pong ball works really well. The ping pong ball is such a small sphere that when you light it with the fiber lights uh, you can make the uh, light look like it's coming from all around the subject. It tends not to work very well for lower magnifications and for just one-to-one -one macro with your normal camera and macro lens it's uh, this is almost an impossible uh, solution but for 20 power I find the ping pong ball works really well and you can again uh, wiggle the uh, fiber lights around to just get the kind of lighting that you'd like is very effective for circuits I find that overhead ring lighting works really well and I picked up this uh, fiber light on eBay and it has a nice controller so you can adjust the intensity I find that it doesn't work too well for non-circuit applications because the lighting gets very flat but that's exactly what you want for circuits so I just turn this thing over oops I gotta move the objective up <coughs> uh, 
and I can put the uh, fiber light right on top of the diffuser. That seems to work pretty well. And I can slide the uh, objective back down and then you can adjust the intensity. That gives a really nice flat light. Here's a neat trick that I found on the California uh, food and agriculture government site and I put a link in the show notes but the link is no longer works and I spent some time searching the site I can't seem to find this but they were using it for their uh, entomology photography and it's kind of similar to putting the ring light right on the top of the diffuser except it's inverted so what I do is I take a piece of wood and put it in the bottom of the ring light and then I can put another piece of wood in the top and I can put the sample on this top piece of, of wood and then they actually identified a uh, plastic water bottle that would fit right on this particular ring light then they identified also paint for the inside of the dome that's very modeled. Uh, I wish I could find that site again because it's pretty neat. Anyway, so this would then go under here and now you've got the ring light coming up towards the objective. Then when you put this on, it reflects the ring light. You can see that modeled paint as it comes through there, but it looks real nice and softened uh, inside and so now the light comes up from the ring light reflects on the dome and comes back down towards the subject and you can get a very uniform lighting in there so I use this sometimes but I find that it's not a whole lot different than just putting the the ring light on top of the dome and anyway, so once I get it set up, then I can use my uh, long arc of Swiss to drop the objective in there. And you don't, you tend not to want to put the objective inside the light dome. You'd like to keep it outside, but it's just, you know, I can't, I can't do that. But it works pretty well. Uh, it's kind of a neat technique. When I'm doing one-to-one -one macro, the normal uh, macro lens on the camera, none of these solutions work very well. So I tend to just put a piece of paper on a snout on these fiber lights. So you have one kind of piece of paper here and another piece of paper on the other side. And that gives you kind of a big illumination from the fiber light. And then you can move these things around with the paper diffusers on them. And that works out for one-to-one -one uh, macro works out really well. You get a very nice lighting that you can get relief by just moving the the uh, paper diffusers around with the fiber lights. Uh, sorry, I don't have the paper here, but you get the idea. This is a very brief description of what's going on with the We Macro Micromate controller, and I have two screens shown here. One is where I've kind of put together what seems to be what's going on with this interface and then the second window is what's happening on the phone. When you bring up Wii Macro, which I'll try to do right now, looks like this little icon right here. You come to the first screen and there's a thing called shutter waiting time, seconds. And then uh, an interval of shutters, which I have set to three seconds. And then there's a step length, which is set to 30 motor steps. I'll explain this a little bit better. Then there's a total distance. It says micron, but it's actually steps, motor steps. And then given that you want to move 30 motor steps uh, between each exposure with the camera, it uh, calculates that there's uh, 1266 of those step intervals. What I think is going on here 
is that you, when you press run, so I'll uh, go to the next screen, and that's this run button right here, which you can't get to this screen. Well, you can get to it, but you have to you have to set everything up here, and then when you go to this screen, these buttons execute the parameters that are in the previous screen. So when you hit run, it's going to wait. The what I call the SWT here, which is the shutter waiting time. I think it really should be called the settling time. So it waits that in this case it's two seconds here, and then it triggers the camera. And whatever exposure values you have set in the camera is what is executed. All this does is tell the camera start an exposure and whatever you have set up. And so then the camera exposes and then the camera exposure ends, but the Wii Macro controller is waiting this unit called iOS, which is this interval of shutters. So you have to make sure that the interval of shutters is set longer than the amount of exposure that you have uh, set in the camera. Getting confused by all my windows here with this OBS stuff. And then after the interval of shutter time is done, then the motor runs. And the motor runs by whatever you have set up here. In this case, it's going to run 30 uh, motor, uh, stepping motor counts. Then the shutter waiting time or the settling time is going to start, which we're all, all the, the whole device is just settling, waiting for the next, uh, you know, if there's any residual vibrations or whatever, uh, you set this so that um, you can wait through that. And then it triggers another exposure. You wait iOS, and then the motor counts, and it just keeps doing this. And in this case, it does it 1,266 times. After you have these parameters set up here, you hit Confirm, and... Since I don't have the controller on right now, uh, it's saying it can't do it. It'll give you a confirmation that it's downloaded the parameters you set into the controller. Then you move to the next screen, and you can step forward and backward. Uh, I don't remember what these two are, but all, all that does is when you step forward or backward, it steps by this amount here on the step length. And if you were doing something where you were worried about uh, any backlash, you could set the backlash parameter here so it wouldn't walk away from where you were when you go forward and backward. But I tend to just start and go in one direction, so I don't care about the backlash thing. And then you can hit Run, and Run will implement the configuration that's on the previous page. But typically before I hit Run, I will uh, hit the Shutter button which will just tell the camera to take an exposure. And the way I have my camera set up is that I have electronic first curtain shutter on. This particular camera does not have a flip mirror, so it's got a fixed pellicle in there instead. So I don't get any vibration from the flip mirror. And I don't get any vibration at the start of the exposure because it's an electronic first curtain. But I will get vibration at the second curtain when the shutter closes. So I'll typically hit the shutter button several times just to let the whole thing settle out. It's not important unless you're at 20 power and above. Uh, then things are just really sensitive. But I find if I hit the shutter button about 10 times, everything's settled out. And the whole setup doesn't drift after that. Because when you're taping, stacking, you, you don't want the field of view slowly drifting as you continue to take exposures. Although good stacking programs will actually compensate for that, you still get some artifacts. Like if you have dust or something, they will get these dark lines that will show up in the final stack image, which you then have to edit out. I like to keep my shutter time relatively long, and I do that by turning the light intensity down. The reason I do that is because any vibration from the shutter closing will then it'd be an insignificant amount of the exposure. One thing I had to determine is how many motor counts correspond to a certain distance that the focusing platform 
when driven by the fine focusing knob move. And I did that by putting a dial indicator on the platform. And I found that I had 20 steps, motor step per micron. So you get a lot of resolution with this setup. So for example, for my 20 power setup, I like a step size of about 2 microns, and that corresponds to 40 steps. So here I have 30 set, which is about a micron and a half. Then if I use the 5 power Minotoyu, I like about a 20 micron step size. I, I think actually I tend to use a 10. And so 20 corresponds to 400 steps, so I'd put 400 in here. And I think the reason this all, it, it says microns, I think if you buy the Wii Macro controller with the linear slides that Wii Macro sells, then these units are in microns. But when I'm using it on the microscope, the units are steps. So here's the uh, system ready to take some automated stacked images. I've got a piece of uh, Madagascan sunset moth wing in there and I'll be looking at uh, like a 1.8 millimeter section of it. So this is the underside of the top wing and I'm kind of concentrating on these locations here. I don't know if you can see it, but there you get mixed colors of scales in there, all along there. Here, uh, I'm going to roll the focus and you'll be able to see it on the uh, inset image. And you can see, this is at 20 power, what a mess it is. The plane of focus is so thin. And it shows why you need uh, to do stacking. Now we'll start the process. So I hit run. It waits. Settling time. Takes the picture. Then the uh, motor moves. Takes another picture. Motor moves. So we're moving. That rotation corresponds to one and a half microns. You can see it'll take a long time to stack through these pictures. Not only do you have the depth of the stuff you're taking the pictures of to stack through, you also have any tilt. So it can, you know, it can take half an hour, 40 minutes. So best thing to do is just go have coffee, watch YouTube videos or something, come back and uh, when it's done and then take the images to the computer and uh, get Zerine Stacker working on them. That's it for this video. Sorry it was so long but I kind of wanted to get through all the aspects of the stacking rig and uh, thanks for uh, watching. Bye.